Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, on Thursday, Instagram and its parent company, Facebook, banned Alex Jones, Infowars, Milo Yiannopoulos, Paul Joseph Watson, Laura Loomer, Paul Nealon, and uh, Louis Farrakhan under their policies against dangerous individuals and organizations, despite the fact that these individuals did not violate their policies. Infowars was subject to the most strict ban. Facebook and Instagram will remove any content containing Infowars videos, radio segments, or articles unless the post is explicitly condemning the content. Facebook will also remove any groups set up to share Infowars content and events promoting the barred individuals. Twitter, YouTube, and Apple have previously banned Jones and Infowars. Now, Jones, Yiannopoulos, Watson, Loomer, Nalen, and Farrakhan are all personally banned, as are any accounts set up in their likeness. But users may still praise those figures on Instagram and share content related to them that doesn't violate other Instagram and Facebook terms of service. Oh, oh, thank you, Massa. Thank you so much for letting me do that. Thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful. A Facebook spokesperson said, quote, We've always banned individuals or organizations that promote or engage in violence and hate, regardless of ideology. The process for evaluating potential violators is extensive, and it is what led us to our decision to remove those Facebook accounts today. My position on this, unsurprisingly, bullcrap. To be clear, I am not a fan of Alex Jones. I think the man is a con man. I'm not a fan of Milo Yiannopoulos. The guy self-admittedly watched young boys being raped at a Hollywood party and did nothing to stop it, not even anonymously tipping off the cops. Not a huge fan of Paul Joseph Watson, though I find myself in agreement with some of his YouTube content a fair amount of the time. Uh, nor am I a fan of Louis Farrakhan, who is clearly and vociferously anti-Semitic. Uh, I'm not even familiar with uh, Laura Lerner, Lerner nor uh, Paul Nealon. I've never seen anything I've done. However, I see no reason why these individuals should be banned. If you're dumb enough to be conned by Alex Jones, then I guess a fool and his money are soon parted. If you're sick enough to admire or enjoy someone who has no problem with young boys being raped, then I guess you're pretty sick yourself. But. If I find out that you have been raping anyone, then I'm likely to beat the frack out of you and or draw my weapon, place you under citizen's arrest, and hold your sick ass for the cops. And if you hate Jewish people, you better just be talking about it and not do anything to harm them. Because again, I'm likely to beat the frack out of you and or draw my weapon, place you under citizen's arrest, and hold your violent ass for the cops. Banning them and deciding that you have the right and the insight to decide what people can talk about makes you exactly the same as a Nazi. It's the modern equivalent of burning books and absolutely as odious and dangerous to the free exchange of ideas. Because if you ban them simply for being a con man or expressing opinions, then someday you're going to ban me. Because believe me, I already stand opposed to you. I'm a libertarian, which means that I disagree with both the right and the left on a regular basis. I disagree with almost everybody at some point, which at some point means that I'm going to run afoul of you rather sooner probably than later. And my voice will then disappear down the memory hole as well. It is only a matter of time. We no longer live in a free society. We live in a technocracy, that is, a society which is ruled by those who own the technology on which we have become dependent to function in everyday life. Now, you might think that I'm applying U.S. First Amendment principles to private companies, while the First Amendment applies only to government. And I agree with you on that point. A private company has the right to refuse service to anyone, whether it be someone with whom they politically disagree or someone who has asked them to bake a cake for a gay couple's wedding. But it doesn't make it any less ethically dangerous. Large technology companies have become the technocrats, the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century. They will rule us first by silencing us on their platforms that they presently we don't have many good alternatives for, and then by starving us, by cutting off our bank accounts and credit cards, which they've already started doing 
I assume it's only a matter of time before PayPal cuts me off for failing to toe the technocratic line. Now, I do not believe that government should intervene. As I've stated, a private business should have the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason, even if it's just because they don't like what you have to say. I believe that ultimately the free market will respond by creating competitors to technocrats, which will eventually garner adequate users to become viable alternatives. And this is why I have diversified my own YouTube account to BitChute and will continue to do so to other platforms. And it's why, you know, while social media is my only viable means of advertising because I don't have any money for real advertising, I also diversify there. I market my videos on Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, Minds, Gab, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Subscribestar. And I would urge you to also diversify, if not frankly outright abandon platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and even YouTube. I can't abandon them because they have the most eyes. But I would if I could. It's unfortunately the price that I have to pay in order to run a YouTube channel. Facebook and Twitter have become particularly odious, and I've been forced to unfollow people and groups who are generally uncivil and toxic just for my own mental health. But remember this. IBM was once considered an unassailable technocrat. Its position was destroyed by Microsoft. Microsoft was also considered an unassailable technocrat, and its position was destroyed by Google. Now Google and others are considered unassailable technocrats, and they will be destroyed by their users abandoning their platforms. Just look at Google Plus for proof. It was a one-time competitor to Facebook run by another technocrat that died lack, due to lack of adoption. If we are to free ourselves of the technocrats, of the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century, we must destroy them by leaving their platforms. I would certainly encourage you to at least create accounts on MeWe, Minds, Gab, LinkedIn, and BitChute, and consider using DuckDuckGo.com rather than Google for your internet searches, because Google is tracking everything you do at all times. And there are links to all of those in my description box below. Now, if you use iOS or Android, unfortunately, the technocrats know where you are and who you are 24-7, and they pull as much data about you as they possibly can. I wish I could tell you not to use iOS or Android phones, but there are no viable alternatives, and certainly none are recommended or recognized by the phone carriers. And this further cements the technocrats as the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century. We should not petition government to force private companies to do business with anyone they dislike. We should instead deprive the technocrats, the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century, of their incomes by leaving their platforms. And that's all I really had to say about that subject for today. So thanks for watching, and if you uh, want to leave your own comments, I'd be really happy to see them. If you like what I'm doing, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, including all of those listed behind me, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and the livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via Subscribestar, my PayPal tip jar, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of money.